today we will talk about site inspection. What we will do today on site inspection is actually to see what type of roof we're going to be busy with and also what type of shading is there going to be a problem with. So the first thing that we will need to check is, is where is Nord. We also need to check if, if there is going to be enough space for the solar system on the roof structure. Now we need to find out what is the inclination of the panels going to be. We know that in Cape Town it needs to be the sun is on the hottest from 12 to 12.30. We need to set up the solar panel between 40 to 45 degrees. We need to check if there is enough space onto the roof. We also need to check what is the height of the roof to the ground so that we can for example get a, step, get a, a leather or we need to get a scaffolding. We will show you by step by step how actually to put on a leather. First of all, we need to check what is the distance from the wall and to where we're going to put the step leather. Okay, then what we will do is we need to actually stabilize this leather against the wall. We'll take a few planks. So what he's doing now is he's actually knocking some wood or you can use steel to knock it into the ground so that we can stabilize our leather. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a, a leather and put it onto the roof because why is a fiber cement roof. So what we need to do is we need to take another leather and put it onto the roof so that, it, so that we can spread the load even onto the roof. Safety. When working on a roof, you always need to wear non-slip soles or shoes. When climbing on a step ladder, you always need to remember the three-point rule. What is this three-point rule? Is that you have to connect with three points onto your step ladder. So we need to connect with two hands, one leg. Or we will connect up two legs and one arm. Once the installers have equipped themselves with the appropriate safety equipment, such as the harnesses, they are now ready to continue with the evaluation of the roof structure. As part of this inspection, they will follow the checklist to ensure what type of roof covering is on the roof. This will give us an idea of what type of waterproofing we would have to use when making penetrations through the roof. We will also check what type of fixations are used to secure the roof covering in place in case we might have to remove a broken or damaged roof sections before our installation. As part of our inspection, it is good practice to take pictures of any defects on the roof as so that this can be documented in case a repair needs to be done. Once the survey is complete, we are ready to start assembling our subframe for our installation before we can install it onto the roof. Once the survey has been completed, the installers are now ready to check that all the components in the reference to the manufacturer's manual have been delivered to site. For this section, we will be illustrating the assembly of the rear subframe. Installers will then take all of the parts out of the packet and check them to ensure that all parts for the rear subframe has been supplied. First part in relation to the manual is part E, which are the nuts and bolts that will hold the subframe together. Following this, we will have part F, which is the rear vertical legs. We have two of these. We then have part G, the load spreading horizontal leg. Part H, which is the link. Then we have part J, the rear assembly cross braces. Part I, 
the rear assembly stabilizers, and finally part K, the main frame to rear frame adjusting arms. In order to assemble the subframe, the installers will need the appropriate equipment. These include screwdrivers, adjustable wrenches, a ring spanner, a ratchet, and socket. The installers have checked all of the parts as delivered and are now ready to assemble the rear subframe. The installers have completed the assembly of the rear subframe with diagonals, verticals and horizontal members perfectly in place. They are now ready to start with the checking of the material for the front subassembly and then with the assembly. Once the installers have assembled the rear subframe, they are now ready to check the components for the front subframe, after which they will then start the assembly. These components include all parts from part A to part F. Part A is the main frame top vertical legs. Part A2 are the main frame bottom vertical legs. Part B1 mainframe horizontal arm bottom. This grouping also contains mainframe horizontal arm top or middle. Part C, which is the cradles. This section will hold our tank into position. We then have D1, which is our panel to frame fixing brackets. Part E, our nuts and bolts to keep the assembly together. Part F, which is our links. Following this, we have part G which is a strap that keeps our cylinder in position. After checking all of the components, the installers are now ready to start with the assembly. As mentioned before, during 
summer in Cape Town. At 12.30, the sun is at its highest point. Therefore, we need to ensure that the orientation of our panel is at exactly 40 degrees as this will ensure maximum radiation from the sun. Once our frame has been assembled, we can now check what the inclination of the frame is. As we can see, the inclination for this frame is currently at 30 degrees. As measured before, the inclination of the roof of the house is at 10 degrees. This means if we add the 10 to the 30, we will have an inclination or tilt angle of 40 degrees, which will be perfect for our solar installation. After completing the sub-assembly frame for our solar installation, the installers are now ready to set up our independent scaffold to gain access to the roof. As always, it's important that they wear the appropriate safety attire, which include our safety boots, overalls, leather gloves, and if needed, safety glasses and hard hats as well. Thank you.